قوله كامل النور المرفوع ذكره في التوراة والإنجيل وكذلك في الزبور المزمل بالفضيلة والمدثر بالطهر والعفاف والمبرأ من الشرور ما كان سبابا وما كان صخابا ولا دعا بالويل والثبور ما كان خداعا وما كان مرتابا ولا سلب بالحيلة أهل الدثور فصلوات الله وسلامه على نبينا بدر البدور وعلى الصحب والآل ومن تبع وقنا بحبهم كل الشرور أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد إخواني وأخواتي في الله Our religion is built, is built on advice is built on sincerity We as Muslims, we as believers we have a task and this task is to advise one another, to advise one another to do goodness, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ And cooperate with one another to do birth, to do goodness, and to have taqwa over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nasiha or advice in Islam plays an important role and it is something essential. It is a kind of art. Not everybody can give nasiha, advice, and not everybody can listen to the advice. There are so many things, there are etiquettes, there are protocols, there are adab that we can learn and that we need to learn before advising people what to do and what they should not do. First of all, in Arabic we say النصيحه على الملا فضيحه اذا نصحت اخاك على الملا فقد فضحته وان نصحته على الخاص فقد نصحته when you give advice to somebody it should not be public if you have an issue with someone teacher sheikh scholar imam professor anybody after he finishes you say sheikh professor teacher brother, whatever, when everything is over, privately between you and him and say, I'm sorry, I, I, I have another opinion. Don't say, some people, they all of a sudden, hey, you're wrong. No, that's not the right approach, right? The Prophet ﷺ, he never did that, right? And he used to say, what's wrong with some people, right? So, gently and nicely approach him and start talking to my nice video. And really, the, the reaction of, of this guy is weird in a way. The Imam in citation, mashallah, is very beautiful. He was reciting from Surah Yunus. One of the people, maybe the last line, he kept interrupting the Imam with another Surah. The verses are a little bit mutashabihat, little bit similar. The Sheikh was right. But the other one insists to interrupt the Sheikh. Whenever the Sheikh continues to verse, this guy interrupts him again, again, again. And I said, SubhanAllah, that Sheikh was very patient in a way. Really. And yani maybe if it was somebody else, the reaction might be different in a way. Okay, so the first rak'ah is done. So the Imam, to avoid all this issue, he started the second rak'ah. He was about to start from another surah. But that guy reminding the Sheikh again. That's wrong in a way. The guy who was interrupting the Imam, his, his prayer is invalid because you don't have the right to do that. And there are so many things you need to do to correct the Imam. Not everybody can do it. And there are so many ahkam rulings. When can I interfere? When can I, can I correct the Imam? It's called in Arabic, Fatih al-Imam. To start by like opening a channel with the Imam. If you are a half of if you are sure. And there are some cases where you have to and some other cases you don't have to anyway. So giving advice or trying to correct some, some people, they do it to show their muscles, for example, to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm more knowledgeable than this guy there. My, I'm, I'm more half is better, I'm half is better than him. Anybody can make mistakes. The Quran is, is 
something huge in a way. Anybody, even big sheikhs, you know, can do it. Anyway, right? So if somebody is, is making a mistake, don't give your advice to anybody, even your son. Don't advise him in front of his brothers and sisters. That should be private. Don't embarrass people. Or maybe that would affect their personality. Some people, they love, like, disciplining their children in front of others to show that, mashallah, he is a very powerful man and he can do that in front of all people. That's wrong. If you, have, if you want to say something to your son, say it in private, between you and him. Not even in front of his brothers and sisters. We are building people. We are building leaders. We are building good members of the community who are going to benefit the community. We are not destroying people in a way. The second thing is to use gentleness. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ to the Prophet صلى الله فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have been very close to them, and they will have been very close to you. So always, subhanAllah, that's subhanAllah, wallahi, in Arabic we call it Jabr al-Khawatir. But the Prophet said it in a very beautiful, amazing way, when he said, Al-Kalimatu Tayyibatu, huh? Sadaqah. A beautiful word is a kind of charity. If you don't have anything to offer, if you cannot donate, if you don't have enough money, a beautiful word is a kind of Sadaqah. Right? When you advise, use the beautiful language, good words. You are advising, you are like a physician, somebody who is trying to find where the, the, the disease is, and then he gives the description, then he gives the medication in a way. So we are trying to fix the hearts, or reconcile the hearts, or soften people's hearts in a way. As the case of Rasulullah, and imagine something happened during the time of the Prophet a man, from among the Bedouins. He doesn't know that masayid are the places to be respected. So he started urinating in the masjid. Some of the companions, they were about to take revenge or stop this guy, taking an action. But the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, leave him, leave him, till he finishes. So privately, the Prophet went to this guy over there and I said, hey, Masajid are not built for this purpose. If you want to do something like that, that should be out of the masjid. And then he doesn't say, hey, you know, he made the, the masjid unclean, and he brought Najasa to the masjid. He didn't say that. He said, just bring small amount of water, try to sprinkle it here and there. The masjid is clean. The masjid of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? I remember a very recent story. A guy, young man, he went to one of the masajid, he was drunk, completely drunk. The Imam subhanAllah was given a kind of wisdom. Some people, they said, hey, this man is impure. He cannot enter the masjid. I said, leave him, leave him. So the Imam helped him and he said, hey, take, go inside, try to take a shower, clean yourself and then let's come and pray. SubhanAllah, the guy started praying and he never came back to wine again. With just a small word, a small piece of wisdom, a nice way as Rasulullah sallallahu sallam. When a man, a young man came to Rasulullah, and he is asking permission. Permission to do what? To commit zina. So somebody said, how? Oh. He's asking Rasulullah, the legislator after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is asking permission to do something haram, to do something immoral. What should the Prophet do? He said, come on, young man, sit down. You know what? Do you like something like this to be done to your mother? He said, no. He said, people do not like this act to be done to their mothers. Do you want it to be done to your sister? He said, no. He said, people do not like it to be done to their sisters, and so on. So the man, when he left, subhanAllah, that amazing conversation with Rasulullah. He said, before coming to Rasulullah Wasallam, the most beautiful thing to my heart was to commit zina. When I left Rasulullah, the most hateful thing to my heart was to commit zina. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa So with lean, with gentleness, with kindness, of course you can gain people's hearts and you can fix many things. Another thing, the third is your intention. 
Always make your intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say, I'm going to advise him to show that you are knowledgeable, for example, or you are a person of knowledge, or you are whatever, anyway. No, it should be your main intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone said something wrong, for example, fabricated hadith, or he made a mistake in a verse, or he gave a false information about something, something even medical, again privately, and your intention is to correct. Your intention is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah Azza wa says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى and cooperate with one another to do birr and to do taqwa. When you give advice, don't expect the other guy to welcome you. Some people sometimes, because subhanAllah, he's in a very critical situation, maybe he lost one of his beloved people, his mother, his son, his daughter, anyway, whatever, anyway. So his reaction might not be something that you like. So you expect that he might be a little bit harsh with you, right? Because he's in a, in a very difficult situation, anyway. Right? What should you do? You have to be patient. Because we said just one minute before, you are looking for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet in the Sahih Hadith, he passed by a grave, and there was a woman. She was mourning, like crying, weeping over a grave. And he said, Ya Allah, asbiri wa taqillah. Have patience and have taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, she doesn't, she didn't know him. She said, you just go away because you are not in my situation. And later on, when she was told that this is Rasulullah, she went and she apologized. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know you. I'm, I'm so sorry. He said, it's okay, but sabr, patience, innama sabr inda sadmati ula What does that mean? That sabr, you are rewarded because of your first reaction. A calamity, something wrong happened, the first, first thing you do is patience. Inna lillahi inna ilayhi rajiun. The reward is here. But don't do it like after one, two, three days and they say, oh, I'm going to have nothing to do but to be patient, to have sabr. That's too late. Sabr, as the hadith says, inna sabr inda sadmatil ula. You can just hold your feelings, hold anything that will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry with you, and then you be patient. That is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And as the hadith says, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَىٰ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Fourth, the one who gives advice should be knowledgeable. Right? You, you are aware about the situation. You are, aware what you, you are aware about what you are talking about. Like for example, the Quran has different qiraat. So unless you are aware about the, the different qiraat, the 10 readings of the Quran or ways, how the Quran should be recited, or you are knowledgeable about fiqh, because we have four schools of thought. We have Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, and so on. If you don't know all about that, then it is better not to talk unless you have a deep knowledge and then you can argue with, I mean, you are a little bit uh, uh, familiar with the idea that the person is talking about, whether it is something religious, something medical, whatever, anyway, and again go back to the etiquette with the protocols of giving advice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya amanu lima taquluna ma la tafa'loon. Whenever you, of course it's not necessarily that you do everything 100%, but at least you start with yourself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhal muddathir confounder, you start by yourself. And then what comes next? وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And tell your family members, your wife, your children, and so on. After that, choosing the right time. The worst time when you give advice is when somebody is angry. Sometimes, that's called in Arabic, اطباق, اخلاق, I'm sorry. When someone is very angry, he doesn't, he's unaware about what's going on, right? So that's not the right way. Wait till that anger cools down, right? Wait till this guy becomes a little bit okay and he is ready to listen. You remind him of manners, akhlaq, you remind him of sabr, you remind him of all of that when he is ready. But even when he's not ready, then you are just 
your advice is not going to be heard and it might not reach the target or you, you might not get the, the results that you are expecting or you are waiting for. And then after that, the last thing is don't give those advice at the same time. Do this, do this, do this, do that, because that's too much. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu ardaw, he used to give admonition or advice to the people once a week, every Thursday in the hadith. And then the companion said, Ya Abdullah, give us this advice every day. He said, no, because if I advise you every day, give your advice every day, you're going to feel bored. But I am following the pattern of Rasulullah كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يتخولنا بالموعظة الحسنة وخافة السآمة علينا He used to give us advice from time to time so we're not going to feel bored. People usually do not like to listen to admonition, reminders, advice and so on. So from time to time give this kind of advice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and you among those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawla hadha wa astaghfu wa razi man yunakum. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم آمين رب العالمين the always when somebody is giving you advice always say جزاك الله خيرا if somebody reminds of Allah سبحانه وتعالى say بارك الله فيك some people if you say to them اتق الله في الله سيدها do I do something wrong? everybody الله أكبر if someone may says to you اتق الله have تقوى you say زادنا الله وياك تقوى وأمر رزقنا الله تقوى من الله سبحانه وتعالى give us تقوى the hadith says شر الخلق من يقال له اتق الله فيقول أنت وشأنك أو عليك نفسك the worst kind of people is when you say to him fear Allah تقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى and then he would say mind your business or just preach preach it to yourself or say these things to yourself. And if somebody says to you, have taqwa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah fi. You are reminding us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are, you are reminding me of Rasulullah. You are giving me a piece of advice. Allah azza wa jalla, when you talked about al mu'minin in the chapter of Al-Asr, Wal-Asr inna l-insana fi khusr, illa al-lazina aman wa amilu al-salihati, ha, wa tawasaw, به بالحق وتواصل بالصبر the advice one another with حق with the truth and with patience may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us taqwa and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make us among those who listen to the advice and work according to it Allah ma amin Rabbil alamin Allah ma la tadalna fi hadha al maladim wa bin illa ghafrta ولا هم إلا فريته ولا محتاج إلا عطيته ولا ميت إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من حواج الدنيا ولا آخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اجعل جمعنا يا ربنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقا من بعد تفرقا معصوما ولا تدفينا شقيا ولا محروما اغفر لهم الآبائنا وأمهاتنا وكل من له حق علينا اللهم عف أبناءنا وبناتنا من يريدون الزواج الحلال اللهم ارزقهم أزواجا صالحين وارزق بناتنا وارزق أولادنا زوجات صالحات يا رب العالمين اللهم وفق طلاب العلم لما فيه الخير والفلاح والصلاح واجعل هذا العام الدراسي عام نجاح وتوفيق لهم ولهن جميعا يا رب العالمين ارزق أولادنا وبناتنا الصحبة الصالحة وابعد عنهم رفقة السوء يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج كرب إخواننا المكروبين في كل مكان اللهم أمين أقول قول هذا وصفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المكتب المقوطة أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
Mr. Supreme Orang Kuloh. Allah Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقلك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنب الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربي فصلى بل تثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نار حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم ضعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبن كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا 
حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم هم بركوس من سستر أنيلا أباد her mother is in a critical condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her full shifa and give shifa to everybody. Uh, before leaving the masjid, don't forget your contribution, inshallah, to the masjid. Really, the masjid needs your support. Before leaving, inshallah, remember, you can do cash or you can use any machines outside. We have a couple of programs, inshallah, tomorrow from 1.30 to 2.30 for all boys and girls. 8 till 14, there is a class for them every Saturday. This series about manners, about akhlaq in Islam. We have another class for sisters on Sunday between Maghrib and Isha to correct their recitation. Sisters on, inshallah. Uh, if you know a friend, a Muslim who wants to know more about Islam, want to visit our masjid, inshallah, I'm available every Sunday between 2 and 3 to tour the masjid or give lecture for anybody who is interested to come to the masjid, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. There is no change for any prayer this week, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair.
السلام عليكم حبيبي حبيبي يا ابو الله